Burning a Jiffy DOS EEPROM can be a pain in the butt, so let's break it down. Oh, I was working on a video on cleaning floppy disks, and then I realized that I had gotten rid of the drive that I had been using for the Commodore 64 and replaced it with a tired old beat up one that I got working, but it's just a mess and it squeaks and it's really hard to listen to the sound of a disk with the drive squeaking. So I said, well, I'll use the Commodore 128D because that's what it's there for, but I don't want to use the internal drive because cleaning disks requires a lot of head cleaning and I don't want to have to open the thing up periodically to do a good cleaning. So then I said to myself, hey, you know, I've been meaning to do a video on pimping the 128, which is coming along pretty nicely for DDM testing. So I said, well, I'll get a uh, external 1571, find one that has Jiffy DOS, get it working, and go ahead and do the video on pimping the 128 before the one on cleaning floppies. Then I started in on that process until I realized that even though the external drive has Jiffy DOS, I don't have Jiffy DOS on the internal drive in the 128D. So in this video, we're going to burn a set of ROMs for the Commodore 128D. I will show you the process if you've not burned EEPROMs before. This will cover that briefly. But more importantly, is some Jiffy DOS ROMs need to contain both the Commodore ROM image and the Jiffy DOS image. When you buy Jiffy DOS images, what you get is just the Jiffy DOS portion. But when you burn a ROM for Jiffy DOS, you need to have the Commodore ROM as well as the Jiffy DOS ROM, and then the switch on the computer switches back and forth between them. So one option you have is just to take the mask ROM out of your computer, put it in your EEPROM burner, and read it off of there. Another thing you can do, which is a lot of times frankly easier, is just look at the part number on the mask ROM, go to zimmers.net, and download the correct file. Then what you have to do is put all the pieces together to make a single binary file that you can then burn onto your EEPROM. Now in the case of the Commodore 128D, that's six different binary files that all have to be combined into one. I buy my Jiffy DOS ROMs at Retro Innovations. You can also buy them at a number of other places, including Retro Rewind, I noticed. So I will put links below to all the places that I know of where you can buy Jiffy DOS ROM images. I actually have quite a few Jiffy DOS ROMs from the Stone Collection. I even have this complete uninstalled set, I believe it's for the 64 and 1541, that he had on file that had never been installed. Woohoo! Now, the reason I'm not using the Promenade is that these chips are too big to fit. The, the Promenade has a size limit, and one of the chips I need to burn is a 64C512, which is a 64 kilobyte EROM, so 512 kilobits, and that is too large to burn on the Promenade. I think the other one I need to burn is a 27256, which, if I remember right, you can burn on the Promenade, but it does require a mod. So, setting up and installing an EEPROM burner is kind of beyond the scope of this video but just real quick if you get the t48 like i did it was a little bit unclear about what you need to run it so on the front page of xgecu.com if you scroll down here there is the t48 56 and 866 plus application software you click on that it brings you to this page so programmer application software click that or they have the 1263 and the 1266. So, I don't know about you, I always go for the latest version. So, grab that, download it, save it in your downloads. Now, one thing that you may notice is that uh, this is a RAR file. So, if we go to downloads, setup.rar. Windows 10 doesn't support RAR by default, so you need to look up and install WinRAR that has a free trial. Once you have that, you can uncompress it. I just like to just drag it into my downloads, hassle with all that stuff. You run this. Once you run the setup, it's going to give you the Windows protected your PC because this is an unknown publisher. So you have to hit more info, scroll over, run anyways. That will bring up your setup. I'm not going to run the setup because this is already installed. So then uh, once you set it up and you run it, what you're going to get, it's going to look like this. 
say, oh, programmer not found. So I'll tell it it's a T48, and I'll go ahead and plug the programmer in, and it finds it. Okay, so now we've got our programmer set up, and we're ready to burn an EEPROM. So to start off, let's start with something easy, and that is, since there's two EEPROMs for the Commodore 128, one for the disk drive and one for the computer, we're going to start with the disk drive EEPROM. Since the internal drive on the 128 is a 1571 and Jiffy DOS for the 1571 auto switches, you don't have to have the original ROM image. This is a simple case of I've got one file and we're going to burn it on the EEPROM. So one thing that's important to note is that with a ZIF socket like this, I'm used to using the lever to indicate the pin one position on the EEPROM. But in the case of this burner and the promenade, that is not correct. So in the case of this burner, the pin one position has to go to the side where the lights are and then it just locks in. Once you have an EEPROM in the burner, you can blank check it and just make sure that it's blank. You cannot write to a, a non-blank EEPROM. This device is blank, so we're good. So the next thing we need to do is make sure we're set to the right image. And in this case it was, because I took a shot of this before. But So 27C256, it's a uh, AMD, dip 28, select that. And then I'm going to load, browse, go to my place where I have my Jiffy DOS ROM set that I purchased. And that for the drive is right here. Now, the difference between the, the program and the binary is the program is for a Commodore 64 where you can load it into memory. So the only difference is, is this has the uh, address two bytes at the beginning of the file that will load it into the right spot in memory on the 64. In the case of this, we just want the binary. 1571 for the 128 DCR. Open it, say OK, and there it is. We have the ROM in memory. So now this is the file we're going to write. We've got a blank chip in the burner. So we'll hit program and program. It is going to go through the process. This doesn't take very long, so I'll let you see how much real time is. Took 10 seconds. Succeeded. Go back. And if you want, I think it's already done this, but you can verify. This is literally reading the ROM, comparing it to what's in memory, and making sure they're the same. So, successful. So we've now burnt an EEPROM for the disk drive. Now the next reprom we need, and this is kind of the main point of this video, is the one for the computer. And it is much more complex. It actually requires putting together six different images, only two of which are provided by the Jiffy DOS purchase, to make a ROM for the 128D. On most computers like the 64, it's literally two images. You need the 64 kernel and you need the Jiffy DOS ROM. But on the 128D, you've got multiple basics, you have multiple kernels, and then you have uh, the Jiffy DOS for the 64 and the Jiffy DOS for the 128. And that's why, I mean, I paid $18 for the ROM images for Jiffy DOS for the 128D, and that's three Jiffy DOS uh, chip images. That's the 128, the 64, and the, the 1571 disk drive. So, I mean, that's, that's just dirt cheap. Uh, I think the prices are very reasonable. So when you get your Jiffy DOS, it's going to come with a zip file. If you open it up and you take a look, you're going to have the 1571 disk drive ROM in binary format, the PAL version, so there's NTSC and PAL differences in the drives, probably timing, Commodore 64 ROM, and the 128 ROM. And then you'll have the exact same four files in a program format. And then there's a text file, which I'll take a look at in a second. So what you're going to have is we're going to need to use the Commodore 64 and the Commodore 128 ROMs, but then we're going to need some actual original Commodore ROMs. So what I'm going to do, um, the drive one here did as shown before, got burned onto a chip by itself. Then I need these two binaries, so I'm going to copy them. I'm going to go to my Downloads folder, and I've built a folder, 128 ROMs, and I'm going to paste those in here. 
Now, going back to this README file, uh, this kind of explains what you need in order to burn it. And when we go down the Commodore 128 DCR kernel ROM, this says 32K. I think that's how much is actually active in the 128 at a time, depending upon whether it's in 64 or 128 mode. But this is not the size EEPROM you're going to need. You're going to need a 64K EEPROM, which is too big for the promenade. So you can see here you need basic 901226-01, kernel 901227-03, kernel 318020-05, basic 901226-01 again and then the two Jiffy DOS and they need to be in this order. Now you can go ahead and just copy these off of your, your uh, ROMs. You can just take the ROMs out of your machine, put them in the EEPROM burner and read them in. Um, what I did just for simplicity is I download all of these from Zimmers.net. So I'm going to put this aside where I can review it and he's got a whole bunch of stuff, but if we go to Commodore, 8-bit files area, so you can see I've been there before. And then we're going to need to start with Commodore 128. Firmware. We want the 318020-05. So once we have that 128 ROM, we'll go back. We'll go into Commodore 64 firmware files we need 901226 901226-01 I'm going to download this we need 901227-03 I don't need the Danish keyboard of course, you may need to get the correct ones for your machine. And if I go look in that folder, three, four, five, like I said, we need six, but this 901226 actually has to be done twice. So we will simply copy it and paste it. Okay, so now we take a look at the original notes here. And I found the easy way to do this is just to rename these one through six. Don't even need an extension. So 901226, 901227 is number two. 318020. 901226 again. And I haven't looked it up, but I'm, I'm going to bet you if I go look at the schematics is that uh, one of these versions, probably this one, shows up when you're in 64 mode and this one shows up when you're in 128 mode. Now next we need the Jiffy DOS 64, which is 5. And finally the 128 DCR. Now, there's a reason for naming them this way. It's because of Lazy DOS. Are you familiar with Lazy DOS? Because I'm an expert at it. We're going to open up a command prompt. We're going to grab that. We're going to CD to it. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to put all these together into a single file all in that order. So we're going to use the copy command slash B for binary and then we're just going to say I think it's in quotes okay so now it just went through one through three four five six and says one file copied but if you look at number one it's eight 8k long but now if I do a directory it's now 64k long so this is our final file so then we can come into here this is now 64k I'm gonna name this all lowercase J 
just like that. And the reason I'm doing it that way is because that way, if I load this into a 64, it'll show up properly. But none of these are needed anymore. And I actually would recommend before you do the, the DOS command to make a backup. I did that on an earlier, uh, when I first did it. So right there is what we need to burn to the chip. Okay. So now I need to change this to a 27C512. It does matter which version of the chips you have sometimes. I mean, a lot of times they're the same, but other times they're not. This is an NEC. So we'll grab NEC, dip 28, select. We will make sure it's blank. It is blank. We will load we will go to downloads 28 DROMs open that up there is our combined or concatenated EEPROM as you scroll through it you will see it's not just random there's actually a bunch of keywords and stuff from various basics so now that can be programmed. And this being twice as big a chip as the other one, assuming it's the same speed, this should take 20 seconds when the last one took 10, a little over. Succeeded. 21 seconds. And just for giggles, we'll verify it. Successful. So we now have both of our EPROMs. Okay, so now I can get back to pimping the Commodore 128. And during that video, we'll get these installed. So one last important step is to get the erase windows covered so that you don't inadvertently erase your newly burned EPROMs. Back in the day, we just used a little bit of electrical tape and it worked great. But nowadays, I really like using these little slip covers I make using my label maker, which probably has more computing power than the whole computer. I hope you liked this video, and next you should check out this one where I used a vintage EEPROM programmer on a Commodore 64 to burn new ROMs for a pet. Thanks for coming!